So in this video, we'll be discussing about the shoulder joint. So the part one of the video is discussed here. We mentioned about the type of joint, the articular surfaces, the fibrous capsule of shoulder joint, the ligaments around the shoulder joint, the synovial membrane, bursae around the shoulder joint, the relations of shoulder joint, and at last we will draw the diagram of shoulder joint and its relation to various structures. So first of all, we will discuss about the type of joint. type of joint so the head of humerus articulates with the glenoid cavity of the scapula to form the shoulder joint so what type of a joint it is it is a synovial joint and it is a ball and socket type of joint ball and socket joint where the ball is formed by the head of humerus and the socket is formed by the glenoid cavity it is a multi-axial joint also multi-axial joint so the shoulder joint is a synovial joint of ball and socket variety and it is a multi-axial joint. Now I mention about the articular surfaces. Articular surface. So articular surface we know that it is formed by the head of humerus. Head of humerus. and glenoid cavity of scapula glenoid cavity of scapula so these are the articulating surfaces now we will discuss about the capsule around the shoulder so we will discuss about the capsule so we know that this is the glenoid cavity of the scapula and it is surrounded by a fibrocartilaginous rim which is known as the glenoid labrum so the glenoid labrum is a fibrocartilaginous rim around the glenoid cavity this is called the glenoid labrum so what is the function of this glenoid labrum so in fact uh, this glenoid cavity is a shallow structure so this glenoid labrum which is a fibrocartilaginous rim around the glenoid cavity deepens the cavity and helps in accommodation of humeral head. So in this way it provides some stability to the shoulder joint. So this is glenoid labrum and we know that the head, this is the head of humerus. Into the head of the humerus, there is an articular, there is an articular cartilage which is attached to the articulating surface. This is also the articulating surface, articular cartilage. So, articular cartilage is also attached to the margins of glenoid cavity. So the two articulating surfaces that is the head of humerus and the glenoid cavity are lined by articular cartilage. So now we will discuss about the capsule of the shoulder joint. So this is head of humerus. And this is glenoid cavity. Glenoid cavity. So the articular cartilage of the shoulder joint is this. Now we will discuss about the capsule of the shoulder joint. So the capsule of the shoulder joint it is attached medially to the margin of the glenoid cavity beyond the 
supra glenoid tubercle and the glenoid labrum it is attached to the margin of the glenoid cavity beyond the glenoid labrum and the supra glenoid tubercle so medially medially attached to margin of glenoid cavity beyond the glenoid labrum and this attached laterally to the anatomical neck of humerus and the inferior portion of the capsule attend extends a little bit downwards into the surgical neck this is the extension so laterally this is about the capsule this is the articular cartilage so the capsule it is attached laterally to anatomical neck of humerus anatomical neck of humerus And the capsule is deficient superiorly superiorly it is deficient this deficiency is for the passage of this is the first deficiency superior deficiency superiorly it is thin and deficient it is for the passage of long head of biceps and there is an opening which is present anteriorly that is for communicating with the subscapular bursae anterior opening to communicate with the subscapular bursae so the lateral extension sorry the lateral attachment of the capsule extends inferiorly to the surgical neck of humerus so in inferior aspect lateral attachment capsule extends to the surgical neck and it is the most dependent part of the capsule that's all about the capsule now whether the capsule of the shoulder joint is very lax capsule is lax so the laxity of the capsule permits high mobility to the joint but there is less stability structural stability is less because of the laxity of the capsule and the range of motion is also high because of the laxity of the capsule so the anterior portion of the capsule is reinforced by some ligaments so we will discuss about the ligaments so the capsule is attached medially to the margin of the glenoid cavity beyond the glenoid labrum and the supraglenoid tubercle laterally it is attached to the anatomical neck of humerus the inferior portion of the lateral attachment extends a little into the surgical neck of humerus which is the most dependent portion of the capsule the capsule 
as a superior deficiency for the passage of long head of biceps and an anterior opening to communicate with the subscapular bursae. The capsule is lax and that laxity uh, provides mobility mobility at the cost of stability. We will discuss about the ligaments. And the shoulder joint. This is the shoulder joint. This is a greater tubercle and this is a lesser tubercle. There is a ligament here which is arising from the root of the coracoid process and it gets inserted into the greater tubercle of humerus. And this one, this is labeled as one is known as the coracohumeral ligament the coracohumeral ligament it extends in the root of coracoid process coracoid process to greater tubercle of humerus There is another ligament, uh, sorry, another ligament which is called the superior glenohumeral ligament. The superior glenohumeral ligament arises from the anterior portion of the glenoid cavity, glenoid labrum. It extends into the upper part of the anatomical neck. So this is labeled as number 2, which is superior Lino. humoral. It is arising from the root of coracoid process and adjacent glenoid labrum. And gets attached to for part of anatomical neck. And the third one, which is the middle lino humeral ligament. So this is a superior one, which also arises root of coracoid process and adjacent part of glenoid leg. And the middle Glino humeral ligament with extends on the anterior margin of glenoid. This is the anterior margin of glenoid cavity and it gets attached to the lesser tubercle.
this is number 3 and here margin of the anode cavity to lesser to better of humerus and the fourth one which is arising from the anterior and posterior margins of the glenoid cavity and gets attached to the inferomedial portion of the anatomical neck this is the fourth one which is called the inferior glenohumeral ligament and which is extending from the anterior and posterior margin of glenoid cavity and gets attached to inferomedial portion of anatomical neck inferomedial aspect of anatomical neck and there is another ligament which bridges the gap between the two tubercle and this is known as transverse humeral ligament this fifth one is called Transverse humeral ligament. So it bridges a gap between the two tubercles that is in the bicipital groove, it is present, and through this, the long head of biceps tendon passes that is the ligaments around that are the ligaments around the shoulder joint now we will be discussing about the synovial membrane So the synovial membrane is like this. This is the head of humerus. This is the glenoid cavity. So we know that um, the, the capsule is attached like this. So lining the inner aspect of the capsule there is a synovial membrane. So the synovial membrane lines the inner aspect of the fibrous capsule. And the synovial membrane has two extension superiorly it extends into the superiorly it extends and it extends through the long head of biceps tendon into the bicipital group the tubular synovial sheath extends into the bicipital groove covering the long head of biceps tendon and so we know that the synovial membrane lines the capsule lines the capsule and it extends into the as a sheath the extends into the bicipital groove covering the 
long head of biceps tendon tubular synovial sheath it forms a tubular synovial sheath around long head of biceps which extends into the bicepital groove covered by the transverse humeral ligament covered by transverse humeral ligament so is a long head of biceps long head of biceps which is covered by trans a synovial sheath and which passes through the bicepital groove covered by transverse humeral ligament and the sheath also has a communication anteriorly to the subscapular vessel it communicates anteriorly with the subscapular vessel synovium communicates anteriorly with subscapular vessel We are discussing about the bursae around the shoulder joint. So the bursae are one is the subscapular bursae. Bursae, which is important because it is the only communicating bursae, only communicating bursae which is always present. It communicates with the joint and it is always present. Always present. Another bursae is subacromial bursae. Subacromial bursae is present below the acromion and it is present above the supraspinatus tendon. Subacromial bursae and it is the largest bursae in human body. It is a non communicating bursae. It is not communicating with the joint cavity. Non communicating bursae. And another bursae is sub coracoid below the coracoid process this may not be present always there may be a bursae which is deep to the infraspinatus that is called infraspinatus bursae this may not be present always another bursae are deep to the coracobrachialis deep to coracobrachialis muscle so these are the and bursae, subscapular bursae is the only communicating bursae and it is always present. Now we will be discussing about the relations of shoulder joint. Now we will be discussing about the relations of shoulder joint first of all we mentioned about the anterior relation of shoulder joint anterior relation so this is the shoulder joint this is the glenoid cavity this is the acromion
is coracoid. So we know that the subscapularis muscle, this is a lesser tubercle, this is a greater tubercle. The subscapularis muscle it originates here, originates from the subscapularis muscle, say, sorry, subscapularis fossa, and it is attached to the lesser tubercle of humerus like this. So, muscle takes its origin from the subscapular fossae of the scapula and it gets attached to the lesser tubercle. So, this is one muscle which forms the anterior relation that is the subscapularis scapularis. And the muscles are the group uh, two muscles which arise on the coracoid process and gets inserted into the humerus that is the coracobrachialis and the short head of biceps arising as a conjoint tendon that is the coracobrachialis and the short head of biceps these are the Coracobrachialis and short head of biceps. Biceps, this forms the anterior relation. There is another muscle that is the anterior fibers of the deltoid muscle, it is also attached here. Anterior fibers of the deltoid muscle, which also covers joint like this. So these are anterior fibers of deltoid. So the anterior relation are the coracobrachialis, shoulder head of biceps, subscapularis, and the anterior fibers of the deltoid. Now we'll be discussing we'll be discussing about the posterior relation. Posterior relation. So we are looking at the this is the linear cavity, and this is the head of humerus, and this is the posterior aspect of the greater tubercle this is the spine chromium so muscle which is arising from the infraspinatus fossa and gets attached to the posterior aspect of the greater tubercle that muscle is known as the infraspinatus muscle infraspinatus Next, another muscle which is arising from the lateral border of the scapula and gets attached to the posterior aspect of the greater tubercle below the attachment of the infraspinatus. That is, that muscle is, is one muscle. This muscle is the teres minor muscle. These muscles form the posterior relation of the shoulder joint. And there is another muscle. Yeah, this is the posterior fibers of the deltoid. So, posterior fibers of the deltoid. Posterior fibers of deltoid. So, these are the posterior relations. That is the infraspinatus, teres minor, posterior fibers of the deltoid. Now we discuss about the superior and inferior relationship. That is superior relation. And inferior relation. Superior relation. So this is head of humerus. This is the linear cavity.
this is the greater tubercle so know that the muscle which is arising from the supraspinatus fossa and gets attached to the and gets attached to the greater tubercle of the humerus on the anterior aspect that muscle is known as the supraspinatus muscle so supraspinatus and another muscle which is arising from the acromion and gets attached here that is the superior fibers of deltoid superior fibers of deltoid and the inferior relation is formed by that is a muscle which forms a that is the long head of triceps bracket which is arises from the infraglenoid tubercle and attached from the posterior aspect of humerus that is on posterior aspect that is the long head of triceps bracket we will be discussing about the diagram of the relations and the blood supply and the nerve supply and the movements in the next part of this video thank you for seeing this video to see more videos from my channel please subscribe our channel thank you